So think of aliens. Think of aliens not necessarily as beings that come from another part of our universe, our universe structured in space. Think of aliens as forms of mind that are configured in a different way from a human mind. When the human mind thinks of such a mind, they tend to think, oh, they come, they, they live a billion light years away. That's just us trying to accommodate the idea of another kind of mind within our space-time framework. But maybe what we, what we call an alien is not a being that exists in our space-time framework a billion light years away from us. Maybe it's a different kind of mind that doesn't exist in our space-time, but occasionally slips into it. Or occasionally our mind expands and is able to perceive the alien that it is not normally able to perceive. As you were talking, I was thinking about, say, say mycelia, who, to, to demonstrate kind of intelligent kind of traits and behaviours, and, and rather than thinking it, they sort of... They seem, there's evidence that they, they seem to sort of operate as sort of multiple kind of millions of entities. There's a, a mushroom that's sort of a mile across, and, and it can demonstrate a lot of the behaviours that we would associate with something that is you know, sentient and intelligent. But, of course, that kind of intelligence wouldn't, would have no, you know, would be completely unintelligible from our perspective. It wouldn't have, like, space and time. It, would, it, would, it, it sort of exists over... Uh, much longer time, you know, time horizons. Yes. And yes, but when that form of intelligence interfaces with our, with the space-time configuration of our minds, it appears as these my, mycelia are own. But that's just the way our minds render this particular type of intelligence. So what we are really seeing is not what is really said, we're just seeing a cross-section of the intelligence that is there that is discernible by our senses. What we're really seeing might just be a cross-section of a much larger intelligence that, is, that, that our minds... Remember William Blake, every bird that cuts the airy way is an immense world of delight enclosed by the five senses. So every bird, every object that flies through the sky or by extension, any object is what he called an immense world of the light, the act, an activity of in, infinite consciousness. But it's our senses that enclose mm. that activity and make it appear as a bird or a glass or, or a table. But what is really there is the infinite. It, there's a guy, um, a guy called Thomas Metzinger, who talks about this thing called an ego tunnel, which is like this, this you know, perceived reality of humans is, is this yeah he, in fact I think he uses the word cross section it's a slice of of the, you know the physical world yes. that, that yes. drives our well, evolution imagine if our four dimensional world was a cross section of a multi dimensional world so we, when we take a cross section through a physical object we get a plane but imagine if this three dimensional world was itself a cross section through a, a realm with more dimensions. Anyway, we're going a little bit into speculation here, but we're not talking fantasy here. I don't think we're pushing ideas beyond reasonable. Then we're not going to the realm of fantasy. Or it, we're just trying to. What we're doing is is seeing that the world that we see is obviously limited by the way that we see. What what we see is the way we see. And our view of reality is, is limited by our sense perceptions. And just, just imagining what, what is really there beyond the limitations of our sense perceptions.